So last week, a foreign a Russian national, Maria Butina, was charged with a conspiracy and acting as an agent of a foreign government inside of the US. And the situation with Maria Butina has been complicated. She apparently was attempting to create close ties with the NRA, with a few Americans as well, and her tactics have been at times sort of sensational. Um, but I have not this entire time really understood why it is that what Maria Butina did stands out so much, why the charges are so serious. And joining the show now to help explain the situation is Lindsay Morin, former clandestine officer for the CIA and a freelance writer as well. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Thank you. So as I alluded to there, you know, I get she was acting as an unregistered agent of a foreign power. But why are why was her, why was her activity so important? Why are the charges so serious? The charges are serious because what she was doing essentially was looking for Americans with access to information, potentially classified information or um, secret information, and using sex to try to recruit them potentially to work for the FSB, which is the Russian intelligence service. Mm -hmm. um, what's startling, I mean, this happens all the time. These efforts are going on all the time, all over the place, not just by Russian intelligence, but by a variety of foreign intelligence services. What's startling about this case is that she doesn't appear to have used particularly good tradecraft. Um, she was super sloppy. I mean, the notes that were found in her apartment, her kind of um, brazen love of and praise of her homeland. Supposedly, she had a picture of shirtless Putin on her cell phone. Um, so it doesn't, whatever training she received from Russian intelligence, they didn't really give her adequate security training about uh, how not to have her cover blown. And, and then she got caught, which is what happens when you don't practice proper tradecraft. So just one quick follow up to that. Do we know for sure that she actually did receive training from any Russian intelligence service? Or is it possible that she was simply trying to make herself useful as a person outside of Russian intelligence? For them? That's a very good question. And my guess would be that she didn't, she probably didn't go through any formalized uh, trade craft training. There's there's some one thing that a lot of people don't realize about honeypot. So I, as a as a CIA operative, a female CIA operative, would never have been put in the position by the Central Intelligence Agency where I was expected to use sex uh, in order to gain information. Uh, similarly, I think actually trained female officials within the FSB also would not be expected to do that. But what every intelligence service does is they look for women who are either prostitutes or escorts or willing to trade sex for, uh, for secrets and for money and use them as what we call agents of influence. So that's what I would guess she was. But I don't think that she went to an FSB training academy or anything like that. I think mm -hmm. that's far from the case. But I certainly think whether it was of her initiative or the FSB spotted her, they saw in her uh, someone who was willing to, to serve her country by um, using sex, using her feminine wiles in order to essentially recruit or target men in positions of power. The other thing that is completely flabbergasting to me about this case is she's kind of a honeypot out of central casting. So you don't, I mean, I've been trained on how to recognize counterintelligence overtures or overtures by foreign intelligence services. Um, but you don't have to be trained in that to, to have been suspicious of her. So the fact that Erickson actually fell for it, I mean, I feel like saying, you know, note to all schlubby, balding, middle-aged guys who have some kind of access to politics or secret information. If there is a hot Russian woman half your age expressing interest in you, you might want to ask yourself if mm. there's some kind of ulterior motive there. Well, if I ever get access to secret information, I will keep my eyes open, don't worry. <laughs> um, it is amazing. With all due respect. <laughs> It's uh, it's amazing to me. Like my knowledge of you know spycraft and all that comes from my love of James Bond movies and Archer. But but so this this is <laughs> this actually works. This is a reliable way to get information. Is this the honeypot that you're talking about? Yeah, it's it's um, it's very reliable. It's very effective um, because look, the way that human intelligence works, the business of human intelligence is using human beings to collect intelligence. 
humans are humans. Mm -hmm. Sex is a huge vulnerability, um, particularly for for men of a of a certain age who you know maybe are at a point in their lives where they're not getting a lot of attention from young beautiful women, or maybe never have. Um, so women often are not suspected. Men do, often don't suspect women of having ulterior motives. Chalk that up to uh, I don't know cluelessness or huge egos or whatever. But this is an incredibly effective way to get information, and every intelligence service does that. Every intelligence service uses honeypots to some extent. It might not be explicitly trading sex for money, but if you want to have access to a man in a position of power and you think he has a weakness for beautiful or young women, why wouldn't you use yeah. someone like that who's who's willing to be a pawn in that game? So uh, I want to, uh, yeah. So her techniques aside, obviously, we don't know for sure that she was actually involved with the FSB. She, she is sloppy, I, I, 100%. Um, in terms of what she was actually trying to accomplish, her ties to the NRA, her involvement with Erickson and, and some of these other individuals, is this similar to how like you know, a French agent might operate inside of the US or US agents might operate inside of Russia? Is this fairly typical, like, um, just trying to generate sources of information, or is this that different from how actual official intelligence agents from Russia, from the US operate inside of other countries? It's it's very different from how official intelligence officers operate. Um, in that, you know, at the CIA, we are explicitly forbidden from having any kind of romantic entangle, entanglements with sources that we are recruiting. That said, if I were operating in a place like Russia and I couldn't get access to a high powered Russian official or someone in the FSB, but I knew that you know he had a crush on a young woman or I knew that he had a young girlfriend or something, I might target her and I might try to recruit her. Um, so this is, this is very standard practice. It's nothing highly unusual. Um, again, what's unusual is kind of the sloppiness uh, with which it was conducted, um, the brazenness, and, and also uh, just the fact that Erickson and I think probably others fell for it so easily. Now, in terms of why would Russia want access to, to someone like Erickson, um, I think one thing that, that a lot of people don't realize, again, about the business of human intelligence is you're not just going after a spies. So for example, if I'm operating in Russia or an FSB agent is operating here, they're not just going to go after someone who's actually working for the CIA because that's a really hard target. But there's a lot of other people who are not as schooled in counterintelligence and maybe they don't have access to secret information, but they have access to important people and those yeah. kind of connections. And we call those um, agents of influence or, or access agents is another word. Interesting, and look, I'm sure much more will come out as uh, as her trial proceeds. We'll find out a little bit more of, about her activities. And I wanna thank you for joining the show and helping uh, break that down. Maybe we can uh, come back to this topic at some point in the future. Sure, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching that video. Before you move on to the next, I just wanted to let you know, I have a documentary series out, it's called True North, available on Go90. And now you can help get it nominated for a streamy as a documentary series. The link is down below, thank you so much.